You know the Mandela Center in Normanton and uh, Baby J, Ragga T, Frank De Paul, um, and lots of other guys. Yogi, who is a, a UK hip hop artist, um, they used to all come down there when they were all your, guy, your guys' age. Some of them used to do break dancing in the back room. Uh, there'd always be music playing, and it was just an happening place. Well, Baby J was one of them guys that used to come in there. Um, and Baby J has always been interested in his music. And when he got older, uh, he, 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 like quite a few of them, they'd go out and DJ him. And uh, at like blues dancers, local parties, uh, local clubs, you know. Um, but at the time, like there were young guys, it was very difficult for them to get places to play, you know. That was my, that's my first recognition the recognition of graffiti in the UK was that book, you know. And I think most graffiti most graffiti artists at my time started off with that book. That book was like I say the Bible where people started in the UK. Never had no internet, so the stuff that you saw was just the stuff that got pop, that popped up around. There wasn't there was very little at the time, uh, but obviously that developed as time went on. Um, and they start graffiti artists started to create their own way of um, promoting themselves through graffiti. What was explained to me to be the four elements of hip-hop was the foundation of the culture, which was love, peace, unity and having fun. People want more here, we're all on the floor here, it's raw here, you can't even sleep and ignore here, cause life's kinda militant, stuck in the grime, nothing's equivalent to this cancer, the state of mind. Hip hop music saved my life and, and gave me a cause for wanting to be somebody and, and stand for a reason, you know, rhyme and reason, yeah there's a reason I'm here, there's a reason I do hip hop, there's a reason I rap and there's a reason I love hip hop because it saved my life. Some of the young people that I've worked with, they've come out of the gang life 
They've uh, got themselves jobs, they've got themselves a good education and they've turned their lives around. And I think each one teach one. If you, if you can teach one and they teach one and they teach one, then it's an ever going ripple of positivity. Baby, this is true, I don't care what we go through I will fight for you till you're gonna be mine Baby, trust me, we're gonna be fine Yeah, I just have to cross the line <laughs> Yeah, I just have to cross the line You can be whatever you want to be You just gotta get the idea, believe it And implement the steps to make sure that you reach the goal We was coming down, I was coming down with a team of people from London on a minibus And they don't know what they're in for I know what they're in for you know, because I've been down here raving even on a cheesy R&B night. So I know, I know what's popping on Derby, so yeah. But Derby needs to stand up, you know. MCs from Derby need to let the world know what Derby is. What's going on in Derby, represent Derby. If you're from Derby, stand up, let Derby be known. There's people who don't know Derby. How are they going to get to know unless you tell them? trying to be in the mainstream and you weren't trying to you know go to church and get a good job and do what your parents said hip-hop was the music that was kind of you know asking the questions and fighting back and that's sort of how I felt as a youth and I think so hip-hop you know I was attracted to it straight away the story of hip-hop you know particularly in relation to technology has always been one of uh, you know these kids taking technology or engineering or how you want to look at it and using it in a way that it was never designed for for them to get the results they want to do. So if, if you look right at the beginning, you know, tur turntables that weren't belt drive as in techniques and magnetic things were never designed for mixing and scratching. They were just more robust turntables for disco nightclubs. And what hip hop DJs is found out that actually you can spin the record back and cue up the break part of a record that was the bit that everyone liked to dance for. So you'd have a, a piece of music that might be four minutes long but the one section where it dropped down to the drum bay and that was the bit that everyone would come out and do their dance moves to. So the DJs worked out, Paul Herb and the like, that they could use these new turntables to pull the record back if they had two of the same record and keep this and play the break and then rewind this one and play the break and use these turntables to make that break session go on for much longer so people come out and dance for a longer period of time. And then the MC, which stands for Master of Ceremonies, was the person that would just hold the mic at a party and say, come on people, get on the dance floor in a slightly more interesting way than that. And then that MC started doing little bits of rhymes and talking over this break session that the DJ was making longer. But again, they were using turntables in a way that they weren't designed for. They were using lamp posts in the park to break open and hook up to the power so they could run sound systems to have block parties because they didn't have their own nightclubs, they didn't have their own spaces to have them so they'd hack into the power source of the city to run block parties. They'd use subway trains to put beautiful pieces of artwork up because they didn't have galleries and they didn't have magazines to put their stuff out in so they'd use the subway trains as galleries as a way of letting their artwork travel all around 
you know, the five boroughs for people to see. So hip hop's always had, you know, this legacy of using technology in ways that it's not meant to be used. And I actually think we made the best of because, you know, those opportunities weren't there. And that's why hip hop is, you know, today in, in, in 2017, is the most powerful cultural force in the world, period. The, U, the UK hip hop scene um, and the culture at the time has always had a couple of fundamental influences. You know, Jazzy B from Soul Soul talks about this really well all the time, but you basically had hip hop culture from America. That's where hip hop was born, mm. East Coast of America, and that was our main, you know, all these artists, Eric B and Rakim, Ultramanetic MCs, you know, Public Enemy, we was watching these artists, we were mirroring, mirroring and mimicking what they were doing, right? But at the same time, you had Jamaican culture. So you had, you know, most of my friends that went to hip hop, their, you know, family were first generation over or second generation from Jamaica. And they're kind of what was looked at as kind of the rebel side of that, so the dreads and, you know, because, they had, you know, there was kind of this thing of kind of, you know, the, you know, if you were a good boy, you went to church and you had neat, nice hair, and the dreads were the rebels, you know, and the rastas were the rebels, it was kind of this sense of that. But that, you know, the Jamaican culture had its own dress sense, it had its own style. And so I think the British style was kind of a bit of a fuse of the two. And even if you look at the British music, like London Posse and Demon Boys, and a lot of the early artists, it was a fuse of the two. So a lot in the Derby scene, a lot of the first MCs that kind of came out, they were kind of. Um, rapping and taking a lot of reference from the American records, but they put patois in there, they put their own slang in there, they put words that we were using. When I arrived in Derby, it was probably around 94, 95. Um, and we took over this building behind us, uh, called it the Gate House. And for me, it was probably my first touch of Derby and Derby hip hop culture. Uh, coming from London, I didn't think there was any here. So I kind of took on a mission to, to bring it, but it was already here, fortunately. Um, you know, we had a, a, a lot, met a lot of good people, and that was part of the reason of coming to Derby to get me away from what was going on in my current situation. Then uh, I had the opportunity to come and run a nightclub. No, I would never have got that in London. And through that, I've met loads of good people, and it's kept me on a path where I'm still working around good people. Hip hop and the elements of hip hop for the youth of today, it's a totally different thing. So then come from where I come from. But like I'm saying, all these other rappers, they're not, they're not, they're not new to Derby. They know it. They know that we've got music and they know what we're on. Especially right now, especially like winning the Grammy side and stuff like that. Like, the, some people didn't hear of the area. So when you're shouting out the area, it's like, oh, what? Derby? Let me click it. You know, like, even in like some of the titles, I used to make sure they put Derby in it. So that people think, what? Because it was starting to become a thing of like not being from London became cool and grand and what's sick right now is most of the MCs I know have got collabs with people from outside of Derby like near enough everybody and they, if they haven't they've got links or producers are selling them beats from there innit so yeah man I think if people start doing that the city's just gonna expand and expand